Signals, signals, signals. I know that you've probably heard about JavaScript signals quite a lot, especially in the past couple of weeks to months. And some of the folks are actually super excited about this one. Some of the others are just completely out in the bush. They don't understand exactly what is the excitement behind signals, what are signals, and how we could potentially change if any of other like front end library or framework works from the ground up. So you've probably already heard about this new JavaScript signals proposal or standard proposal that is currently in stage one, and it is actually part of the TC39 of you know ES proposals. So currently, it's actually, as I said before, stage first stage in here, and actually a really, really solid proposal has a lot of features has a lot of thoughts. And it's really, really cool. And the effort put on this one actually has been made possible by just like a contribution from all people or folks working on this kind of frameworks like angular bubble, um, ember to preact quick js rxjs solids Velt, view and so many others and they're actually trying to come up with this signals proposal that is a standardized kind of like javascript api that all of the frameworks can now can go ahead and use which can make us as developers or people who use those kind of frameworks going to make our lives quite a lot easier because it's going to have one single api which is like signals and all the frameworks literally use the same api so like the learning curve of every single framework Framework is just going to go up and all of them going to have like the simplest API and all of them going to share the same API, which is going to make it super awesome and easy for us. So I'm not going to go ahead and actually cover the signals proposal, but rather I'm going to cover up this really awesome new hook that just came out, which called use signals, which is from the creator of like libraries like zoo stand or Jedi or and currently actually just been published three days ago. And of course, this is actually an experimental react hook for the TC 39 signals proposal. But before we actually can go ahead and jump into that one, we first need to go ahead and take a quick look on how signals work or what is a signal. So a signal is just a normal object constructor in here that is called signal or you can call this as a namespace that has actually two types. First, the most primitive and important type is the state type. And it's actually is going to be the main time that you're going to be using, which you're going to represent a state, whether a number, Boolean or whatever, you can imagine this as a normal react state. That's basically a single a signal state, or you've got the computer in here, which is basically just taking a callback and returns a signal. So all of these in here are just considered signals. Now the computer callback in here is actually very useful. What it actually allows us to do is actually use another signal. For example, we've got this counter signal in here. So we're using it right over here. We have to use the get method to access the value of the counter signal. And this one is basically we're just saying, Oh, is the counter here even or odd? then simply we can even use another computed because as I said before, all of these are just like normal signals, whether it's actually a computed callback in here or a primitive state value or a signal, basically all of them are signals in the end. So basically this is even can go ahead and be actually be able to use it instead of this like parity sort of signal or computer signal. So you can do is even dot get and you can check whether it's even or odd. So simply you can just, you know, convert value in here from an integer or simply a Boolean to a text where it says like even or odd. So you can basically simulate like an external click or something, let's say like a user is clicking or something, or we can just simply use the set interval in here to simulate like a loop for every single second, we're going to go ahead and increase the counter. And we can use this helpful method that is inside of every single signal. So you can do counter dot set, and you can set whatever value in here, you can even use another signal in here, which is counter dot get, and you can do plus one or whatever. And this will go ahead and immediately update our signal. Now, last but not least, the most important part in here is actually the effect method that's actually should be declared and provided by the library, but not the signals proposal because each library in here or front end library or framework should do the effects in here differently from the others. So each and every single one should provide their own implementation. So just a simple example in here, so I've got like the effect in here and the effect only simply does it actually watches the whatever like single we've got in here. So let's say this parity signal is attached. So you see a parity in here is actually attached to is even and is even in here is actually attached to counter in here just like from right over here. That means every single one is going to be listening for changes from the others. So any change on the counter in here is going to propagate to the is even then it goes from the is even to the parity signal in here. That means the effect in here, the callback that is inside of the effect in here is going to run whenever the counter in here is actually updated. And you can imagine this effects method simply as a normal use effect in react. 
Boom, it doesn't actually have a dependency list in here, which means it just like can watch and smartly know that whatever signal is actually being used inside of it, it's only gonna update and run the callback when that particular signal actually changes, which is pretty, pretty nice. And that's the whole idea of signals. So for example, we can go and use this new use signals hook. You can easily install using NPM in here, but it's actually still in early development, so it's not ready for production just yet. But you can actually go in and play around with it to see how powerful signals are. So for instance, I already cloned the repository in here and I've got like a simple counter example as any other React application basically have a normal counter example to demonstrate how basically state works. So on the top in here, we've got two signals. The first one is the normal counter signal, the primitive one that starts from zero. And the second one is actually a computed signal, which is a double counter that we just created a computed signal in here that takes a callback. And we're using just the counter in here, multiplying it by two, which means any changes on the counter in here is gonna make sure that the double counter is gonna change and actually gonna calculate that times two. Now, the magical hook in here is called the use signal. They can go ahead and import it from use signals. And what this one does, it takes a normal primitive like signal in here or a computed signal right in here, and it returns a signal or a state value that can be used inside of a React component. So later on, we can go ahead and render our count in here, just like from right here to here, even the double count in here, we can go ahead and actually put it in down there. For incrementing or updating the counter, we can go ahead and create like a simple method called increments. We can do simply counter.set. And remember, we're not using the primitive state value, but we're actually using the primitive signal value, the original signal value in here, or the signal itself. And we're using the set in here to actually update the value or increment the counter. So if we were to change or go ahead and take a look into this one, so we got the count in here, we got a double count. I can go ahead and do plus one as Chris in here. Both of them are updating successfully. And as soon as I click one, because the first one is actually gonna change the count and the computer count is actually gonna follow as soon as it notices that the count is actually incrementing or changing. So that is working fine. As simple as that, you can just simply use signals. But you're probably wondering, what is the benefit of signals? I mean, you can just replace the here, like this new use signal hook with a normal use state and I mean, what is the difference? What does that make? What is it good for? Why do we need signals or specifically to be a better rephrase question for you? Why do we need signals in React? So to better understand what is the benefit behind signals and what is the problem with actually fixing especially for React? So let's say we got this shopping product sort of component here where you can actually shop in here and you can go in and do add to cart in here. He says, oh, already added to cart. And you can go and open up your cart in here, which and open up a cart drawer for you. And you can find all the products that you added. Now, currently this one actually uses a use state is here in here, just uses use state in here, has the cart, it passes the cart to products and stuff. And specifically in here to make sure we're actually double checking how React works, especially the rendering loop. So we're actually doing a console log in here in every single component. For example, we're doing a re-rendering application in here inside of the app component. We for the cart, we're doing re-rendering cart and for the products as well. And we're rendering both carts and products right into the application. And also we are actually holding the state, which is like the cart state in here to hold, you know, the what products are available inside of the cards, like on the main application component, which is the pair component for both cart and products. So you can go ahead and take the cart state in here and actually pass it down. So if we go back into our web page and actually open up the dev tools. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and add to cart. So I'm going to click on add to cart. As you in here, the first thing that you notice, we're doing re-rendering the application, re-rendering the cards and re-rendering the products. Even though the only thing that changed is actually the current state in here that we have right over here, that none of the others actually needed that one, only the cart needs that one. And the cart is not open just yet, which means it's not rendered just yet, but it's actually being re-rendered. So every single time you add to cart in here, it's going to do another re-rendering and another re-rendering. It basically re-renders the whole tree. That means every single time the cart in here actually changes, it's going to re-render all of these components over and over and over. And that's basically the problem with React and the React state. Because every single time the state changes, it kind of like go ahead inside of the GSX tree in here and re-renders the whole tree, even though the product component, for example, doesn't need that new state because even for example, if we add a separate component that's called footer in here that actually has nothing to do with the card, it doesn't take the card as a props. It just like renders a static HTML in here, which is normal footer copyright red row 2024. And even though that if we just like change the card in here, we're going to find a re-rendering footer as well. So that means it just recreates and re-renders the whole GSX tree. So now instead of using use state, we want to actually convert this into a signal. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this one use state. I've already created a signal for this. I'm doing new signal state and I'm actually passing an array because our signal 
is actually a cart and a cart is actually an array of products. So I'm gonna use that cart in here and I wanna actually change this add to cart to the other add to cart. So from this one to this one, where now we're actually doing cart set and actually using cart get in here to get the previous cart products and actually just con concatenate it with a new item in here. As simple as that, we pass in add to cart in here to the products as well as like cart to the cart as well. I mean, this could work and actually completely fine when creating a signal in one file and actually passing as props to the other file. But this kind of like beats the idea of signals because signals are actually shared and can be created into a completely separate file and imported into all these components without explicitly passing the signal value in here or the signal instance as props. So I can go in and create a new file. I'm going to name it current signal in here dot TypeScript and make sure to import the signal in here from use signals as well. And also make sure to export const cart in here for our noise signal so we can import it anywhere else. So here we can just go into our cart in here inside of the app components and actually import our cart signal in here from cart signal. And we can remove this where you pass in explicitly the props. You don't need to do that anymore, but rather it can just be done separately. Even for the add to cart in here can be just like go ahead and you can copy that add to cart and actually completely put it inside of the product. So if we go back to products in here, as clearly in here, we've got add to cart even inside of the product itself in here. So we don't need that. We don't need that one in here. We simply just go inside of the products. We just go ahead. I'm gonna go paste that one add to cart and I make sure to go ahead and import our cart. So just, just make sure it selects cart signal in here to import cart signal, remove this from the props. And also you need to make sure that you see this card in here, you have to convert this from a normal signal to a react signal using our use signal hook. So you can just do oh cart signal and do use signal and just passing in the original signal in here. Now using this cart signal, we can just go in and pass it in here so it can just be used properly. And the same thing goes for the cart drawer in here. So we don't need a cart anymore, but rather we're gonna go ahead and import the cart. So no, we're actually using the cart right over here. So I don't need this one or simply I don't need the first one in here, I can simply do cart. So I can just go ahead and do import the cart in here. And you can either do cart don't get signal, but I don't actually advise to do that. So make sure to go ahead and use our use signal hook. So the same thing in here can do cart signal use use signal. And from this one, we can just pass in our original signal instance. Now we can use this cart signal in here after importing everything, we can just go back down in here, just remove that one, remove the dot get in here. And now we can just do, you know, cart signal dot map and it should work. And again, we don't need the cart in here because now we've got one single signal inside of a file and can be imported literally anywhere. So inside of our application in here, we don't need to pass anything because we've got our signal inside of the car signal to TypeScript in here that is shared and exported in here and every single other component like the products, products in here, or the cart drawer in here, like right on the top is actually accessing that one or even the normal cart. And now actually our products in here is actually accessing the cart as well as like the cart drawer in here is actually in the cart. Now if we test the up functionality again, but this time with signals, so we can do add to cart, add to cart, everything is working, the state is changing in here. If you go to the cart in here, take a sneak peek, it's actually working fine as well. And it's showing us all the products that are inside of the cart. And if we go ahead and check the performance issue we had before with React, where it re-renders the whole GSX tree. So now with signals, if you click on add to cart, as you see in here, there's nothing on the console in here. So that means it's literally doing no re-rendering of the whole GSX tree, it only just updates the single UI part that is this button in here. And it just doesn't update the whole tree or the whole re-rendering process, which is super, super efficient for if you have like large sort of like GSX tree with a lot of states and a lot of competition going on behind the scenes. And if we go to the cart in here, if we open up the cart, as we clear this in here, immediately when we open up the cart, we're gonna get this like re-rendering the cart because the cart is only gonna be re-rendered when it tries to read the data from the signal. And that's basically when it's actually, you know, the user opened the cart and that's the only time when the signal is gonna be hit. It's only when it's gonna be needed and it's gonna be like, you know, re-rendering that cart component only when that signal is actually called or in simple words, when the value of the signal needs to be accessed. That means when this is called with the use signal, we got the car signal and we try to render the different products. Now, if you're wondering how to you can use this effects method in here to basically create callbacks that could listen for changes inside of signals. I mean, you can do it with this really simple example. I actually copied this code in here from the original JavaScript proposal repository, which is not like super optimized. They don't advise to use this in production because this, as I said before, should be implemented by the framework or the library that's providing you, you know, with the view layer and the interactions and the signals and stuff. But as far as I can tell, it actually works pretty well. 
if you just boost this outside of the actual rendering block or the, you know, outside of a React component, I couldn't actually figure out how to make it work with a React component just yet. And the use signals library doesn't have that just yet, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna have a, a, like a specific use signal sort of effects kind of method very, very soon. But for now, this actually works pretty fine. So if you go back to the browser in here and you go actually try to add something to the card, excuse me, you get the like effects running in here and every single time it gets a new value. So it literally gets like the most up-to-date signal value. So yes, I'm super excited about what to see upcoming about signals, especially in React. I know that React 19 has something cooking with signals and especially with this new proposal is gonna be super, super awesome. I'm in love with signals. So let me know what you think about signals down below in the comments. For this particular library, the use signals is not yet ready for production, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be soon as more and more you know versions and features are gonna be added to it. And I would love to see this JavaScript proposal finally making it to the ECMAScript ecosystem. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think about signals. If you think there's gonna be a big hit or just like another minor kind of feature, but see you hopefully in the next video.